Welcome to a special edition of Let's Talk Jonesboro. Today we have Dr. Neil Barty of the Delta Symphony Orchestra. He's a professor emeritus at Arkansas State University. And I think, uh, Dr. Barty, you uh, created pretty much the Delta Symphony Orchestra. Is that a fair statement? That's an interesting word, but you're right. <laughs> uh, something came out of nothing. That, that's true at that time, 1974, 75. I moved here in 1973, but 74, 75, we discovered there were no orchestras in the whole Northeast Arkansas region, colleges or public schools, and we decided we needed to have some symphonic music here. Several people got together and said, let's form a symphony orchestra, because this part of the country is a lot of intelligent people, a great music school going at ASU, and uh, why not take advantage of that and, and do something as well as have a lot of great bands and choirs. So we did, a, people got together and started the, this symphony. And this orchestra is fabulous. You probably have heard it because it's been around for uh, 40 plus years. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have talent from not just uh, the Jonesboro area. You, you have uh, people coming from how far? Well, we have some, uh, our graduates that got band director positions in Southeast Missouri that still play their instrument. We have professional musicians from Memphis that augment our string sections because we don't have string programs in the public schools very okay. much, in the high schools anyway. And so, yeah, we draw from around here, from Searcy and Harding area, Batesville area, Lyon College people, and quite a few. Well, it's been a wonderful thing, and it's, you always think of uh, the, the DSO during holiday season. We've got July 4th coming up, and then, of course, we get into the the, the real holiday season following that, but uh, you guys have had an interesting, uh, just like everyone else, you are reinventing how you do things. So you've had to figure out your plans for 2020. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what's in store? We have been trying to reinvent things. We have been educating and entertaining and enriching for 46 years live audiences, but we had to cut that off in uh, May. We're not able to do our May concert. And we were also invited to play for the NYIT graduation, and that was canceled at the event. So we're having to go to uh, virtual performances or recorded performances. And um, we are doing some things now. Our Facebook page has had Tuesday evenings, every Tuesday at uh, 7 p.m. It's been featuring some of the winners of our Young Artists Competition and other symphony members doing some individual things. But uh, now we're thinking a little bit bigger, and uh, we're really grateful the city has invited us to participate in the Channel 24 schedule. So we're going to plan some things uh, along the way from the fall up to Christmas anyway to augment our season. And it's, uh, it's an honor for the city. Uh, the mayor, Perrin, is excited about uh, the, the offer uh, from uh, Dr. Barty and Dr. Skog and, and everyone who uh, is going to do this, this work for us, I think. Uh, it's not for us, it's for everyone, and it's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring the, the symphony orchestra into your home. And, you know, these, this is how we adjust. This is part of, you know, everybody out there is adapting in one way, shape, or form. And now how to, to get an entire symphony orchestra to do that is way above my pay grade. So <laughs> <laughs> how did, what, what, what did that conversation look like? How did it come about? Well, we have a very uh, <clears throat> active and uh, intelligent board, and we've been thinking, trying to decide on a lot of ways to go. And uh, one of the uh, easier things is to take our pre-recorded performances, replace some things people might have missed in live performances, and be able to show them what we have done in past years. We've had some great uh, projects and partnerships and things in this competition, and. Uh, so we're going to uh, use that as, uh, take segments of it and use it in some themes. First one, as you said, is patriotic. Mm -hmm. That should be uh, on pretty soon here in July, we'll get that put together. We did a program in uh, February called Presidential Portraits. That was basically, there is a Lincoln portrait piece by Aaron Copeland, and there's other patriotic things that we did, so we're going to take some of those. Where can uh, this, this uh, be found? Where can people go to listen and, and watch? Uh, the DSO. If you go to the uh, DSO Facebook page, okay. that's where it, it, it's announced there, and uh, it just starts at 7 p.m., and there's a little thing on the screens coming up live in just a few minutes, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be on there. That's been every Tuesday evening, recorded things. Great, and the city, of course, will share those things on the city's Facebook page, 
and website and channel 24 at the same time so uh, I think uh, this is a great thing to add so you don't have to watch uh, a, too many council meetings on 24 you get some entertainment out of it well not that those aren't entertaining but, but maybe this is a different type of entertaining um, tell me a little bit about your contributors well, uh, symphony orchestras don't uh, survive on ticket sales. I mean, no, and 2020 has been an extra difficult yeah, year. Yeah, they don't have any ticket sales. So uh, we rely a lot on donations, and um, we have sponsorships. Uh, you can see on some of our printed programs, they're listed from various businesses and uh, enterprises in town. They're just, just donations that want to see the culture in Jonesboro continue to be thrive and improve. Well, all the nonprofits are having a difficult time, and uh, so we rely on donations a lot. As a matter of fact, on this time, it's uh, especially important that people could give to us. If they go to our Facebook or our website page, first of all, mm -hmm. they'll see a little button that says Donate, and there's various ways you can do that. That's dsojonesboro.org. It's a quick way to get there. dsojonesboro.org, and uh, these donations will help fund the, the nonprofit that is the Delta Symphony Orchestra. That's right. And it's pretty critical. Now, you, we've talked about uh, nonprofits during, during COVID, and so this is especially important this time of year, I would think, or this year, I would think. It is. Uh, all the nonprofits are struggling. The, I mean, the New York Philharmonic has canceled all of its concerts till January, mm. and other organizations, the Broadway shows are off, you know, for the right. rest of this year, and so. But we play, uh, Pops music, show music, Broadway music, film scores, uh, you know, John Williams adventure series, and lots of things that are more entertaining than, uh, than uh, like some people might think, Baroque music is uh, it's great. You have classical, modern, romantic, all those things symphonies play, but right. we also do modern things that are fun, too. That's great. Now, tell us, we've got uh, what, what special, what are the highlights of the rest of the year that you have planned? Well, our series is going to be on uh, Channel 24 in uh, four segments. So around uh, in July here, around the July 4th, we're hoping to get this on with, uh, we're going to play Stars and Stripes Forever, uh, 1812 Overture. Our, our joke is that's by uh, the great Russian composer, played on all American Pops concerts. <laughs> so and the cannons go off, and uh, actually the screen shakes when you hear the bass drum hit the cannon shot. Oh, is that but, right? Yeah. Uh, American Salute, a Civil War thing. Um, we're going to play a piece that we premiered, actually, the orchestration of in February. Dr. Michael Dugan kind of discovered this piece. It was a piano piece written uh, for the Emancipation Era. President Lincoln actually saw it and autographed it. And uh, we had our own uh, writer orchestrate it. It's the first time a symphony has ever played it. It's called the Emancipation Proclamation March. The President's Emancipation. That's yeah. fabulous. So and, that'll be fun. And you're going to do some things to explain to people, too. We're going to do some recordings to explain to people what they're about to hear and right. its significance throughout through history, I guess. Yeah, that. there'll be a little lead-in of a, a live or a recorded intro by one of us. And uh, I'll have Dr. Dugan describe this piece that was written in the, the uh, Civil War period, right. actually. And then uh, we'll have a salute to the Armed Forces medley where we play songs from the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and even the Coast Guard has a theme song. So the Coast Guard has a theme song. Yeah, we uh, we played that at our last concert. Had all the uh, veterans stand at their, you know, saluted them and everything at their, at their uh, time when the song was played. Very it's nice. pretty neat. That's nice. It's great to have that everything you're doing is purposeful and 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 methodical, planned planned very well. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I think. Uh, tell me about your your leadership. Who? Uh, of course you, but who, who do you lean on to, to really make things happen? Is it too big a board to name? It's a lot of board members. <laughs> There's okay. 20 of us. 20? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Our, our president, Warren Scogg, and the vice president, M.G. Myring, are kind of taking the initiative on, on these programs, making sure we get, get out, and uh, a lot of others on there. We've, we have a program committee. There's seven of us on there that's discussing more of the details, how to plan out each thing, and... Uh, yeah. So, we have how, a lot of people working. How many pieces do you have in your orchestra? Uh, individuals that perform on instruments, uh, we have uh, 55 to 60, depends on the needs of the music. Okay. That's a good uh, community size orchestra. I would think so. Now, talk about some of the things you do with the schools, because I know you, we have 
some elementary schools maybe that, that are doing some things we, with strings and that sort uh, of thing? We've done several projects um, at the VPA school in Jonesboro, Visual and Performing yes. Arts. Uh, my wife helped start some of those programs earlier on. They have a string program there. We at one time brought in a clinician who came and went into the school and taught the kids extra special things about how to play their string instruments and then performed a solo on our symphony concert. So we get grants to do these things. That's it's a big deal is writing grants for projects. That's great. And we went into the uh, city youth after school program one time and, and hired a dance instructor and the singers. We worked with the kids. They came on stage and they performed with the symphony. And we went to uh, Gina Gomez, who was one of our board members, worked with the uh, El Centro Hispano. We brought in a guest artist from Colombia, who lived yeah, in the nice. United States, Memphis now, but sang and played with the symphony and her band. And she went in and, and did after school programs for the kids about language and culture in their, uh, their native lands. It was really neat. Oh, and we worked with uh, special needs kids, too. You know, Pat Qualls has been doing that every year. Oh, she didn't get funny. to do that because of the pandemic. but. Right this year, but we did a whole program with the Overcomers Choir and all those those kids that are That's talented. Right. Right. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable. But, yeah, so, we, we education is one of our big deals. That's wonderful. And so they're a vibrant part of our community and, and uh, I think this is a great time to be able to enjoy the Delta Symphony Orchestra and uh, Dr. Barty, we thank you and, and everyone else associated with making this something that that we can do rather than you know it would be easy just to sh just to shut down and and say we're going to uh, stay under the radar until the coronavirus passes but now you found a way and uh, from the mayor and uh, and I both we thank you for for doing that for Jonesboro and I think it's going to be a great thing great partnership for us well we thank you too and uh, I'd like to say a thanks to the advertising and promotion commission who have given us a grant for advertising for this whole year. So we are, we're very fortunate to receive that and use that money to help bring people into Jonesboro for these things, as we did for our Young Artist Competition. We had people come over from New York to California to Florida to Michigan, uh, all over uh, the last several years just to be able to perform in our contest. That's great. That's been neat too. That is great. And A&P does do a great job for Jonesboro. Sometimes it, you, you don't realize how much they're behind. So the, the, the They promote. do a lot for us. We appreciate it. But uh, thank you very much hey, for having me. Hey, thank you for, for being a guest on our show. We don't shake hands anymore, but... That's we'll good. <laughs> All right. Join us next time on Let's Talk Jonesboro.